What? No, what you know what I'm Okay, I started talking to Kalao. I said uh, earlier, uh, we were talking to her today and uh, she wanted to share testimony. I think she, I'm not just getting all of her and all of you, but that's okay, it's a good thing. Uh, so, uh, I kind of let everybody go through all that work, but set up one might just be you, so you don't need more. But we're going to have uh, Kalao share, okay? So just, I think one of the things that's so important that, you know, the purpose of the testimony that people are sharing is to encourage each other. You know, that, uh, that God, the God you serve, is alive and real, and that He's active in the life of all, all of us. You know, sometimes uh, you need, I need somebody else's testimony to encourage me because I'm struggling. You have to say, you know what, get off, you know, that violin or mind with the cello and, and get back to where you belong, and that's in the form of worship, right? Uh, so, uh, in terms of what we get out of Tanya's head, she flies off, so we don't need to worry. Yeah, she get her shield, so in the name of Jesus, bless you, go ahead, give your testimony. Ready? Hi everybody. Hi everybody. Um, before I start, can you guys raise your hand if you're stubborn? Like, be truthful. Oh, thank you. Oh, no. <laughs> Got you, sister. But anyways, um, I've been dealing with, um, I guess, both since August 14th. Um, just this past Wednesday um, or Tuesday, I made a jump to the other foot. But, um, through this trial and tribulation that I've been going through, all God told me was reach out. Simple as that. And as stubborn as I was, I did it. And it took me to the breaking point where I couldn't even put myself on the toilet. And I just kept screaming. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And all I told her was, grab me my phone, I gotta do an SOS. And finally I reached out. Um, like the title says, don't be fooled. I thought I got it, you know what I mean? I thought I had it. I thought I, you know, I've been to this ordeal before. And, you know, I've never lost this long, well, maybe four or five days to the max. But, you know, when you want to take control, or you think, ah, you got it. Oh, God take you on this roller coaster ride till you finally submit and admit that you got it. Yeah. Oh. Like I shared with my pool of ministry, I thought that's all I needed. You know? That's all I needed. Two or three people praying for you. But no, God wanted me to step beyond that. Right? And you reach more than just those that I'm comfortable with. And like I said, I was stubborn. I was shame. I was tired of hearing. Oh, you know, like, maybe you should do this. Maybe you should do that. You know, like, like shut up. You don't even know what I'm going through. That was my attitude, you know? And, um, lo and behold, God actually went use somebody to remind me what I did for him. Yeah. And and I, I just gonna say Ben. Yeah. Of course, I have a relationship with Kanani, with Eva, because that's my ministry. Yeah. I'm comfortable in sharing my flaws and weaknesses and whatnot. 
And here comes Miss Fat, like texting, right? And I was like, oh, thank you, sis, you know, like, I'm good, I'm good. Thinking of all and whatnot, right? But it's, she reminded me of something. She reminded me that when she was home, I was there. Yeah, and it's those simple things that we forget how God use us in His way. Yeah, but more so to bring Him glory. I mean, He used so many of you during my trying time. And, you know, like, I took advantage of that. But I will be honest with you. You know who it kind of um, wake me up? Was Yuri. Was my talking doctor. Come on, my talking doctor. Come on, right? And she reminded me of uh, what Jesus is in Christ. You know, he be sharing me about them, yada, yada, yada. How come you're not reaching out to them? I said, you know why? I don't want to burden them. Ah, oh, they get distance learning, they get big things. You know? And, I was, and she was like, yeah, but you know, like, you have to talk to somebody. I said, uh, that's like talking to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I was bawling everything, sharing from my heart. But, just that. Why are you not reaching out? You know? So I did. I would reach out to them. But never made me feel any better until I reach out to the SOS group. And the SOS group, if you guys don't know, once we see SOS, we go into prayer. We stop what we're doing and we go into prayer. Right? And we allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us on what to pray for. And lo and behold, honestly, after I did that, that was the first night I slept so good and I could feel the presence of God surround me, comforting me and brought me peace. You know, and that's why I said, who ain't a stubborn? Like, we gotta stop being stubborn. Don't be fooled by our mindset. But be encouraged no matter what we go going through. And honestly, I thank God. Hey, we don't have to use my chair for my walker. He gave me the strength to have a beautiful shower this morning. To do whatever I needed to do for ministry. And most importantly, to show up. Yes. You know? And I thank God for blessing me with the love of my life. Like I, you know, joked around with my sister. Oh, you had the general small right in. Oh, I screwed. <laughs> you know what I mean? But then again, you know, hey, everything God provided for us in our lives, man. It's purposeful, you know. But it made me also look at Gerald in a different lens. Yeah, instead of breaking him down, you know. He was willing for camera and I'm like, Oh no, we can't both be disabled. No, no, no. You know, I mean, it's just going to this. Make me appreciate what I have. Appreciate more what, uh, what God provided me in my life. Uh, it took me to watch my mom's celebration of life. Uh, Perform. Let me and Gerald both in tears and that's when Gerald confess. Honey, I need you. You know, those simple words would help me push. God need me. You know what I mean? Like, you need me. Lord, you need me to continue to do your will. Yeah? Like how he used that. Right? That's the least person I would expect. Right? Because She's, you know, we don't have that, like that post neck, right? But God wants to show us that He can use His people who He chooses 
to minister in our lives. Yeah? Because in the end, who will get all the glory? All Him. You know, and, and at such a time as this, you know, I just want to thank all of you guys for, for the prayers. I'm here. Like Shannon, as you always do, you all know, see you guys tomorrow. And I'm thinking, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Last night was, was hectic. The pain was so unreal that I was like, oh, I just said, oh, God, I'm getting married. I should have just had it. Oh, yeah, we see. But no one ever said that. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, like, thank you, Jesus, that like, you gave me the strength to show up. Gave me things for you to, to, to move. You know what I mean? So, like, Uncle, Uncle Bob always told the church, continue praying for me. Yeah. Continue praying for all of us. And that's all I wanted to share. Thank you. All right. So, with that, um, we're, we're going to prayer. Um, we'll call out. And then we get started with message. You know. Heavenly Father, we come before you and once again, we thank you for being so good to us. Lord God, Father, you know, uh, we, we don't know why certain things happen, Lord God. We, 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 I should say we know that it's because you are using us for your glory, Lord God. You don't make it all, all these bad things happen, but you can take those things, you turn it around for good, that you will be glorified. You know, and, and, and in such a crazy time as this, Lord God, you know, most of us call, will call us crazy believers, crazy Christians. Uh, but our pain, our suffering, our trials, our tribulation is, is purpose. And that purpose is that you will be glorified as they see our lives hanging on to you, you and all the strength that you give us and the healing and, and, and just getting us to this place of, of victory. Uh, we become that testimony that sharing that you are indeed the God of God. So Father, in the midst of all this that's going on in life, I pray that you continue to reveal yourself to her, Lord God, that you continue to bring healing upon her, Lord God. Father, you gave doctors this great ability to have this wisdom, uh, that they can look at these medical things and put them all into place to God and then figure out what's going on. I pray that as they go today, uh, that you would give her the right doctors, Lord God, that would put everything into a, a order that they'll be able to figure out exactly what's going on. And then in the, in the middle of all this going on, all this stuff's happening, that, you know, uh, you should be able to share your wonderful name, Lord God. I thank you for the, the sassy doctor. <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have a blessing, right? As a, you, how, it just reveals how you can use the world for people who may not know you still speak to your people. And so we thank you that you love us so much that you do not stay quiet on us, but God, that you do speak to us. We just got to look really closely sometimes. So thank you for all the healing and, and, and the victory that you're going to be putting into God's life. And we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So, uh, I'm very excited. You know, I'm, it's so funny, you know, it was a rough week. Uh, uh, but it was a good week because I had, like, a, a short week at work. Uh, it was so funny. In the short week, it was a lot of hectic, a lot of stuff going on. But the funny thing is, I was sharing with somebody today, uh, we were just talking about the struggles of, of life and the struggles of even being a Christian, working and, and getting all this stuff together. You know, it, it may seem easy, but it's not easy. You know, in the midst of life, you still have to put all these things together. So I'm working on Paul's message, the message of that Paul is saying to the church, and then I'm falling apart because I love the message. I love what he, he has to share today. So as you all know, uh, we are finishing up chapter 11. The first half of chapter 11, pretty much Paul is talking to the church of Corinth, and he's telling them that, you know, some of these guys that you guys are all moved over, that they, they, you know, they, they talk in nice, they look in nice, and you guys are just grabbing on to your teachings. He's 
telling them that, you know, you guys are being fools. You're listening to them. You guys are not measuring in the ways of the Lord, but you guys are measuring in the ways of, of the world. When you look at something, and if it looks good, sounds good, then it's got to be good. In this case, if it looks like Jesus, sounds like Jesus, then it has to be Jesus. But Paul is telling the church, you guys are making a big mistake. And at the final ending, when we end it, pretty much he just came straight on. He goes, you know what, I'm just going to say it. You guys listening to false teachers. And I, and I, I love that. You know, he just kind of just, okay, I'm trying to tell you something. You're not getting it. So now he, he just pretty much lays it down. After that, is what we're going to pick up today. This is the part where he starts to give his credentials. He's boasting, basically. Uh, but I love it because there's a lesson here, uh, several lessons that we can leave with today that will encourage us as believers to continue to walk our faith. Yeah, you know, continue to walk the faith that God has called us to live, walk in, regardless of the things that's happening. You know, so I'm listening to Kalau stuff, and you know, I'm like, oh man, that's exciting. Yeah, she's probably like, uh, that may be for you, but not for me, right? We probably all feel that with whatever situation we're going through. And today, I think the message is really huge. It's going to speak to us, all of us, because, you know, we live in a world that's deteriorating, and there's a lot of issues going on. There's a lot of problems. Some of us, uh, you know, we, we have break, uh, broken hearts and, and uh, broken relationships and, 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 and you know, Broken bank account, I mean, whatever. I mean, you just go figure it out, okay? But all of us here will be able to relate to what Paul is saying because a lot of the times we have this misconception that if we are believers in Christ, that life is perfect. The life we live in this world is not perfect. Life in Jesus is perfect. But living the life in this world is not perfect. And it's, if we can get this mindset right, that becomes a testimony about perfect living in Christ. And so I, I pray that we, we see this because the false teachers in the church of Corinth is pointing out all the struggles that Paul has dealt with and is dealing with. Okay, so uh, let's let's get started. For us, uh, Corinthians 11, 16 to 23, it says, oh, wait, let me, I forgot to change that, but it's going to be 16 to 18. And it says, again, I say, don't think that I'm a fool to talk like this, but even if you do, listen to me, as you would to a foolish person, while I also boast a little. Such boasting is not from the Lord, but I am acting like a fool. And since others boast about their human achievements, I will too. I love it. Right? Because you have to read in between the lines, you have to hear what Paul is saying. And, and it's really crazy because he's, he's still being sarcastic. You know, like, I love attitude. And, and this is like sarcasm that I like. Right? Uh, so, what I tell to you folks that boasting, there's bad boasting and good boasting, right? Uh, and so how do we determine what is bad boasting and good boasting? Well, you know what? Like anything else, we turn to the Bible and the Bible will give us the definition of both of these. Listen to this, Jeremiah 29, I mean, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 9, 23 to 24. This is what the Lord says. Don't let the wise boast in their own wisdom, or the powerful boast in their power, or the rich boast in their riches. But those who wish to boast should boast in this alone, that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord, who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth, and that I delight in these things. I, the Lord, have spoken. So here we see the definition of what is a good boasting and what is, what is bad boasting. And, and, and I love this because this correct boasting is actually twofold, okay? 
So, what is the first thing about Hosu in the world that we need to know? Well, you know what? You can go around and boast about your relationship with the Lord. That's not bad. Right? I know God uh, on a personal basis. You can you guys can boast about that. You know that it's okay. In fact, I go to work, I was kind of one with Jesus. Right? Nothing wrong with that. It's not even about me, it's all about the Lord. But a lot of times we won't say that because we think we're being judgmental. But no, those are tools to be open up conversation and so also oh, what about you God? Right? And then we continue to boast. What is the second part of this boasting? Oh, what about my God? My God is wonderful. Scripture tells us that we can say that. That we have a personal relationship with God and that my God is wonderful. You know, I, I think it's so funny because a lot of times, you know, we, we, we try to figure out new ways to draw people in, but you know, like the book we're reading, you know, the old well, right? going back to the old well, basic stuff, simply saying, I love the Lord, and because He's wonderful, He's good to me, He's great conversation. Because people want to know about this God that loves unconditionally. People want to know how to be loved, regardless of how un perfect they are. I was sharing with a friend today and I, I, I love I love Paul's uh, message because it's constantly reminding me that a lot of times I will look into my own life and I will measure myself using the world standard and then all of a sudden I disqualify myself to be a servant of the Lord. And I'm like, man, this is so hard because then I gotta get back and I gotta focus and I go, okay, Lord, I'm letting the flesh in. Anybody here ever discredit yourself for being blessed and used by God? Anybody? You guys ever do that? Think, oh, maybe I'm not all that. Maybe somebody, the next person next to me can be used better than me. Right? We all do that. And I love it because at the end of this, we're gonna find out that. That is exactly why God wants to use us. We'll get to that in a minute. So, Paul is saying here, the correct way of boasting is not look at my church, look at my house, look at my car, look at me. You know, it's look at the relationship I have with my Jesus. It's a personal one. And then, you know what, let me boast to you about how wonderful He is. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 19 to 20 says, After all, you think you are so wise, but you enjoy putting up with fools. You put up with it when someone else enslaves you, takes everything uh, you have, takes advantage of you, takes control of everything, and slaps you in the face. I'm ashamed to say that I've been too weak to do that. But whatever they dare to boast about, I am talking like a fool again. I dare to boast about too. Now, it, it's really crazy because Paul's boasting again is the same becoming sarcasm. You know, and I love this because, you know, Sometimes you just don't hear it, the, you know, when they come out. You, know, you get, like she said, the, the coffee doctor. Yeah, we'll just say my, my terminology, yeah. The coffee doctor that she ran into, the sarcastic doctor, got to think. Right? And, and so, Paul is taking another avenue to try to get them to understand. This is how foolish you get me that I even have to talk like this, right? So, there's some words in here that I want us to grab onto, and, and when Paul uses the word weak or weakness, and then he uses the word advantage of you, he, he puts all these words together, and it's really crazy, because what he has put together, 
Uh, if you take it in context, and you, what you find is like somebody, a hunter, that's on the on the prowl and invading somebody to get caught, or an animal to get caught. It also speaks of an, an, a, an animal uh, devouring another animal kind of mindset. And so what Paul is saying here, you know, um, you guys are listening to these teachers because they sound good and then they, they, they're looking good and then they're tickling your ears, but they're setting you up like a hunter who baits a prey. Their job, their total goal is to kill, uh, still kill and destroy. And so he's telling them to not be gullible, not to be fools. Stop acting, you know, like you don't have common sense. Earlier in the scripture, we find that Paul uh, is telling them that they need to discern the spirit, right? And that they need to measure what's going on because they're preaching on Jesus, they're preaching a gospel, they're preaching of spirit, but it's not the gospel of the Lord, it's not Jesus Christ, and it's not the Holy Spirit. It is deceitfulness. And if we are not wise to listen and measure everything up with God's word, we are going to be deceived. And I want us to understand this. That is the goal of Satan, to get into the church, into the minds of the people of the church, and get them so confused that they no longer are being reasonable or listening to reason according to Scripture and walk away. Sorry, my ear keep popping. So, you know, I've seen this happen over and over in our own church. I, I see, I, I still am so uh, emotionally attached to uh, one incident where a guy came into the church just claiming to love the Lord. I mean, he was preaching the, 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 the Jesus words, you know, just saying, oh man, the Holy Spirit. And later I found out this guy was taking a, this fan, this one uh, guy out of the church doing service outside, sharing with him what God wanted him to hear. And when I finally found out, because uh, you know, you're up here, you're not thinking about everything else, somebody on the outside, one of the leaders, Several of the leaders came and said, hey, this is going on, you need to address it. I addressed it, and the guy uh, that came uh, to the church, I, I actually had to talk to him and said, you know what, whenever service is going on, you are not allowed to pull anybody out of the service. They are here to hear the word of God. And then he told me that God told him, I go, well then, you need to listen to what God told me. According to scripture, the pastor of the church is the leader of the church, and you need to be submissive to his authority. There's nothing you need to leave here. I don't have to leave. That is the first guy I ever, ever, and it was so hard for me, have to kick out of church. I told him, you need to go find me someplace else because this church is no longer going to welcome you. But when he left, he took a whole family with him. Till today, that whole family is lost. And the guy that got caught up went back into the world and later on passed away. Because of some issues. I I get furious when somebody comes in and tries to deceive God's people. And that is also why I also tell you guys that whatever I preach, go check it out. Don't think that you know I, I, I'm so holy that I don't I you know everything is you know 
the whole world that I say. I'm not saying that don't, you don't, don't respect me. But what I'm saying is you take what I say, you measure it up with the word of God. And anytime you find something not matching up, then there's a bunch of leaders in this church, if you're not comfortable, that are more than willing to come and confront you. And then we'll deal with it. But I'll tell you this much. Is that I work hard to ensure that the gospel is preached the way the gospel is preached. And I don't always like what the gospel has to say. But it's not about me. It's about what God has called us to live like. Now, his false teachers were coming into the church and they were really messing up the people's lives. Right? They, they were getting so confused that now they started pushing against Paul's teaching. Yet Paul is the one that came in and brought the, 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 the church together. He's the one that led them into this relationship with Jesus and continued to teach them how to grow in this relationship. But they got misled because they were listening to things that tickled their ear. How does this speak to us, right? Well, I, I think all of us, okay, all of us, including me as a pastor, we must stop being impressed by powerful people. We must stop being impressed by people who speak good. Right? Oh, wow. And, you know, a lot of times, you, you know, you ever, we you know people who can talk good good. I, I talk to you, I talk to you. Right? But people can tell a great story. Right? The motivation of speaking. And they to talk and go, wow. That's cool. You have good people, and you have people who will be deceiving. So how do we measure that? Well, we have to take the, what they say about God and then we have to take their life and we have to match them up. They don't have to be perfect. When you get Paul's life, Paul is far from having the perfect life. In fact, when we go through a list, his life sucks. Right? I, and I was going through the list today and um, throughout the weekend and I was going through today I go, Paul, you can keep your list. You know what I mean? I'm like, man, what am I complaining about? I'm, I'm acting like a girl. You know, that's what he's going, he went through. I'm like, oh my goodness. Right? So, whenever you listen to anybody, again, yeah, measure what they say about God and how they live for God. Don't get caught up, okay, they like, they get big house, they get big name, they get all that, no matter. That's just the world standard, right? Look at how they love God and how they're living for God, even if their life is all full of trials and tribulation. So we go on, 2 Corinthians 11, 22 to 23. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I know I sound like a madman, but I have served him far more. Really crazy. Right? Because when we start looking at this, Paul gives us another insight about the guys that's coming into the church and messing things up. And it's basically his own people. It's Jewish people who are coming in and messing up the work of the Lord. And I say that to, to you because we have to take the old, well, <coughs> sorry. last week's message, and remember how the, uh, the scripture told us that Satan will come as an angel of the of blood? Sometimes, there will be people that look just like us, meaning Christians, who will come in and 
try to manipulate and deceive those who are in love with the Lord to be misled. You know, we talk about the end times and, you know, uh, I, I don't think, you know, we shouldn't know about it and all that stuff. But what we should really understand is that Satan has rule at this time and the purpose that he was given rule was to deceive as much people as he can. We know the story of Job, right? How many of you guys know the story of Job, right? Some of us remember the book as Job. I remember when I first read that book of Job to me, you know what I mean? Then I learned I was wrong. Uh, but Job was given such a privilege to be a witness of how it is to love God. Job carried the torch, if you would. He was God's ambassador. Just like how we are, you know, we are the ambassadors today. And the Lord told Satan to say, because the reason Job loves you is because you gave him everything. But I bet you if I mess him up a little bit, he'll stop loving you. And God said, you know what? You can do anything you want, but take his life. And that stinking devil did a number of Job. Took everything from him. Job remained faithful. I, I, you know, I love the story. I, I, I say this all the time because, you know, when I read the story, I'm like, that's impossible. I gotta believe being human, he had a little bit, you know, frustration. But in the midst of all that stuff, he refused to speak against God. And I was so moved with that story a long time ago, which I'm still moved by today. And what moves me a lot it gets me all crazy on the inside. And that God trusted Job to be his ambassador. God trusts us today to be the ambassador of his kingdom. You know, I, I, I listened to Kalal's story today. And, you know, her struggles. And I'm praying, and, and, and the Lord put different people on, in my heart and, and in my prayer life of well, struggles that they go through. And, and there's a struggle of, of, you know, you know, what is God doing? You know, does God love me? And am, am, am I getting what I deserve? Right? It's kind of crazy. But I want us to understand that. You know what? This is why we, we come together to, to be encouragers of each other. You know, the SOS thing, we started that. You know how that started? My pastor friend said, you know what? Sometimes I felt I was, uh, when, I, when, when I was going through this ordeal uh, with the divorce and all this, uh, and I said, you know what? I'm trying to write to him, and, I, and then he goes, Ah, I didn't get that text a couple of days later. So funny, yeah, because I'm like, a couple of days later, I, you know, I needed you then. <laughs> so funny, because I didn't read my text three, four days later myself, right? So I'm, I'm all guilty. But then he told me, you know what? Do this, because I cannot read everything that I said, because there's a lot that coming in. He goes, send me an SOS. And I was like, SOS? He goes, yeah. A bunch of us that we just send SOS, that means pray for me. We don't know what the prayer is, we just go into the, the, the time of prayer and we ask for speak to us. And we pray over that person. The SOS. We don't know if it's for somebody else or for them, but we just pray. You know, um, so I encourage you guys. I, I'm not technology savvy, that's the right word. So, uh, so if you guys want to join the SOS, go see somebody else. Um, I invite you guys because I kind of invite you guys. <laughs> I read them and that's it. Uh, but, you know, 
I, I think it's very important that we, we come together. Paul was saying here, these guys that enter the church, the same people, they're my people. And they mean deceived. Deceitful. Okay? And sorry, I'm kind of way on this side. Uh, but I want us to understand that if we're not careful, we can be misguided within our own church by our own people, meaning believers. Always measure what they say. Okay? So we find out that these false teachers uh, are part of uh, the culture, you know, they're Jewish. And Paul agrees with everything as far as their heritage, but Paul disagrees with them being servants of Christ. Okay? Now let's look at the boasting part. He goes on. So from 23, he says, uh, Are they servants of Christ? I know I sound like a madman, but I have served him far more. Then he breaks it down. This is the part, this, 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 I'm going to put it on my wall. Uh, I have worked harder been put in prison more often, been whipped times without number, and faced death again and again. Five, five different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. I have traveled on many long journeys. I have faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I have faced danger from my own people, the Jews, as well as from the Gentiles. I have faced dangers in the city, in the desert, and on the seas. And I have faced danger from men who claim to be believers but are not. I have worked hard and long, enduring many sleepless nights. I have been hungry and thirsty and have often gone without food. I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. And besides all this, I have the daily burden of my concern for all the churches, who is weak without my feeling, without my feeling that weakness, who is led astray, and I do not burn with anger. If I must boast, I would rather boast about the things that show how weak I am. Isn't that how crazy, crazy it is? You know, I read that over and over and over. Every time I started praying, I don't know if you guys do this, so I open up in prayer, you know, the morning, Lord, Father, I bless you, Christ Jesus, I bless you, Holy Spirit, I love you, blah, 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 going to my conversation, and all of a sudden, who oh, is my life? You know, I don't know if you guys ever do that, you know. I think only one minute into the prayer, if I'm lucky, let's give it to be honest, 35 seconds. And then, Lord, my life. Right? And I'm like, I'm stupid. I'm reading this. And I go over and over and go, man, I'm a girl. And no offense to the girls, okay? Uh, and I, I'm like, I'm a girl. I was like, oh, man, work was hard today. I get a jerk at work I got to deal with it. Or somebody on the road, they cut me off. Then I read some of these. Uh, five different times, I had 39 lashes. I go, lashes? Oh, my gosh. You know what I mean? Uh, it is crazy. Then, you know, I'm like, oh, Lord, you know, I'm struggling with this. You know, my feet hurt. And then I start reading on here. Then he goes, I can't even tell you how many times I've been whipped. I'm like, oh, well, that must have hurt, you know? And then he goes, I've been beating with rods. And I'm like, man, I'm like, Lord, I am a girl. And I keep going, like, see, I'm saying that. And I look down at the mountain, the mic room faces the mountain in the window. And I'm like, taking my hand, and I'm like, and you listen to me? You know, Lord, you listen to me. I, I'm like, you know, I, I get bad, I get pillow, I get naked. I mean, I ain't starving, right? You know, this guy is like, I mean, shipwrecked. He even been afloat, you know, a drift for a day and a half. I'm like, what a girl, I keep doing this. You know, I'm like, I'm like, Lord, help me to change my mindset. You know, well, what, what can, can we learn from this, right? Well, I, I think one is that, you know what, 
because of the hardship in people's life or even in our lives, it doesn't mean that God isn't active. The Bible says this, and you all know, you've all heard it, you know, when Jesus says, travel surely to that and overcome that, and so will you. Right? That is the victory that we can receive through Jesus Christ. We're not going to live a carefree life with no pain and no agony and no crying and no ugly people, right? No bad drivers on the road, you know. Does anybody else drive bad? I don't know. They should come to me for lessons, right? I don't understand. Uh, that's not going to happen until we get called home. But until that, until that time, we are called to endure all these different things. How do we become victorious over that? Because according to scripture, we're not going to be, uh, it's not going to be separated from us. We're not going to not have to do, deal with that. We're going to deal with that, but how do we overcome it? We overcome it by trusting what God is doing in the works of the whole thing. You know, I shared with you guys uh, several weeks ago. The big thing that God was putting on my heart was uh, my portion. My portion is my portion. Yeah, because I don't look. Oh, my portion sucks. That's portion better. Why do you bet my better portion than me? You know? And the Lord would say, because your portion is your portion. Right? That struggle is her struggles. Her victories is her victories. My struggle, my struggle, my victory, my victory. But if we wise, we can use this as she did it with Kalau and Kalau did with Beth. We we'll be encouragers of each other during the different times in their life, the different seasons, and became strong and started to hang on to their faith in the Lord, trusting that, you know what, if God got me through this this time, He'll get me through this this time again. So, you see, so we, we learned that, you know what, just because our life may not look good, it doesn't mean that God isn't moving in our life. Too many times we get caught up on the surroundings, and if the surroundings is good, we measure that as that is where God is working. But can I be honest? Be real honest with you. That's not the work that God is concerned about. The work that God is concerned about is the work that happens inside here. That is the big deal. And that's why I'm, I'm reading stuff and I'm getting blown away and I'm like, oh man, you get a bomb. Because in the midst of all this that's happening in that happened in your life, and now you're dealing with the church. You know, just, just bashing you and, and you know, yet you're just kind of hitting heavy. You still in love with God and trust that God is doing something. In fact, He refuses to step back. He gets into the faces of the people and says, hey, come on, you gotta love this guy. You see, these false teachers were picking on Paul's. Uh, Credentials, if you would, yeah, all the things that you went through, and say that is a good sign that God not with him, that his work cannot be part of God. But like I said, uh, an outward circumstance should should it be the sign of an inward favor or disfavor of God or for, um, that we have towards God? Now Paul says this kind of thinking is wrong, so then he starts to reach for his list and he starts to read it out. Now, I want to say this, so I want to make sure we get this. So if you are sinning and your life is kind of like sucking, it's called repercussions, okay? You have to deal with your sin. If you are sinning and you have hardship and you're doing, you know, you're getting all cracks all over, uh, it sounds bad, but that's what you get. But Paul's story here is that if you are enduring hardship, right, ridicule, and pain, and, 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 and you know, you boast about it, right, these weaknesses 
that is in your life, these struggles, these trials, don't use those things to discredit God's use of you. Don't use those things to discredit your life to be used by God. Some of us, I was thinking about this, I was praying about this because uh, told people has come to my, my, my prayer life. And, uh, you know, the, if God loved me, then how come this happened? Or, you know, I love God, so why did this happen? We live in a world, like I said, that's falling apart. But the problem we have here is the me, me, me problem. Right? Because what Paul is seeing here, we grab this whole list of stuff and all that's been happening, he tells us what really matters. And what he's saying to the people there then, and he's saying to us today, what really matters is God. It's Him that matters. Right? You see, that, that is the, the, the mistake humanity makes all the time. And it's the same mistake Lucifer made. Right? We know that guy better by the name of Satan. The problem was it was all about him. A lot of times we make life all about us. When we lose that heart of making our life all about him, then we start losing the right perspective of why we are created. We know we are created to be worshippers, right? Worshippers of who? Of God. But don't we worship ourselves? Right? You know, I gotta have the best of this, I gotta have the best of that, I gotta have the best of this, whatever it is. I just, status is a big deal, what people think. But what really matters is what God thinks. You know, a lot of times us Christians, we don't want to share our weaknesses because that means we don't have faith. That is so wrong. I share my weaknesses because I don't have the faith right at that moment to endure the persecution or the trial that I'm going through and I need help. I know that God is God. I know that He can get me through anything. But while I'm getting beaten up, it doesn't feel like that. I feel like I'm losing. So I need to tell somebody how I'm feeling, how broken I am, how much I don't know if God is really in my life right now, trying to do anything or trying to change things. And then that person comes back and let me tell you about the God I serve. Let me remind you why you serve the God you serve. Why do we raise our hands to Jesus? That's why I tell people, I always scream on myself. Not because it makes some story, no, it's because it helps me to stay in line with remembering that God is in control of my life. Because I don't know about you guys, but I like to take control of my own life. I like to do things on my own and say, God wanted me to do that. God, God wants me to be blessed. God wants me to be happy. And God does. But not all the time the choices we are making leads to happiness. So, you know, when we go into this, this hardship, whatever it is in your life that you're going through and you're kind of getting all bust up, I, I don't want you to start doubting God. I don't want you to think that God may not want to use you or you're not good enough. You're good enough. You're so good enough that He sent Jesus Christ to the cross. Right? So that you can be saved. Jesus said in Mark 10, 45, even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give His life as a ransom for many. You see, even Jesus came to do the Father's will and to give the glory to the Father. 
by serving His purpose. I, I was thinking about this, you know. Uh, we, we're going to celebrate that today, you know, the, with the, with God giving up His Son for us. And then Jesus giving His life. Uh, that the Father's will to save us will be fulfilled. But Jesus, He endured being spat on, being beaten, being mocked, and then nailed to the cross. He was... I, I, I know that He didn't want to do that because we read the story in the Garden of Gethsemane when he, he was sweating blood. But He said, you know, if this is what it takes to fulfill the will of the Father, then I'm going to do it. I, I say this because I'm trying to, I want to encourage us believers that no matter what is happening in your life, to be encouraged that God is moving and God is doing something. Don't measure those struggles and those trials as discrediting God's love and purpose to use you. That is foolishness. Okay? 2 Corinthians 11, 31. Uh, God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who is worthy of eternal, uh, eternal praise. No, I am not lying. Basically, he goes to turn around and tell the church, he goes, you know what, one day he is going to hear the truth. It's going to be revealed to you. I am not lying that these people that are coming in here are false teachers and are trying to steal you out of the hands of God. Now, we've heard this before and many people will debate with you and me and, and that's fine. The Bible says that no one can remove us from the hands of God, right? Or the love of God. And so they claim that once saved, always saved. Here is another example that Paul is saying if you are not careful, people are going to deceive you and you can make the choice to walk out of the hands of God. When you make that choice, you are saying to God, I don't need you, I can do it on my own. When you do that, you are rejecting salvation. And then people get all crazy about it and everything. And don't get mad at me, I never read the Bible. I'm just telling you like it is. The reason Paul is saying, don't be fools and gullible and listen to people who are just talking a good talk and tipping your ear because they can deceive you. Is it because you cannot lose your salvation? He's saying it because you can lose your salvation. That if you're not following the ways of the Lord and you start to believe in a different Jesus, a different gospel, a different spirit, then definitely you cannot be saved by the true spirit of the Lord. Does that make sense? You know, and, and this is why even more we should be like, so alert. Not, not so much so that you know, we, we, we can spot somebody teaching. It's because your salvation is dependent upon your diligence to stay in the Word of God and to recognize the Word of God. 2 Corinthians uh, 11, 32 to 33. When I was in Damascus, the governor under the king, uh, Aretas, uh, kept guard at the city gates to, keep, uh, to catch me. I had to go, I had to be lowered in the basket through a window in the city wall to escape from him. I love it. I love it. He ends with another story. Right? Basically, he ends with another challenge in his life. He ends with another, oh, yeah, I'm weak. Yeah, I'm not like them strong people. I love it. He's so cocky. I love it. You know? Uh, what he was saying, if you take this story and you kind of put it together, what happened, and this is where I think he, we, we've got to get the lesson. What he was saying to them, I believe, is that how many of you have ever wrote of the uh, uh, Paul on his way to Damascus, his name was Saul, you know, persecuting Jesus. On the road of Damascus, he had an encounter with the Lord. Remember, you guys remember that? He got blind, he was the Ananias, and then Ananias, very clean, over the days he was blind, he also lost his eyes, blah, blah, blah. So maybe like that, but you know, he was just holding the story. 
Uh, but what happened is that, uh, and I think it's in Acts 9, I'm wrong there anyway. Paul, uh, you know, is now has this experience with the Lord and, and, and he's starting going around and teaching or preaching. And his preaching became more and more powerful. That the Jews were getting upset with him. That his preaching about Jesus was irritating them because he was telling them that Jesus is indeed the Messiah and everything that they were believing and doing and, and the way they were thinking was wrong and they need to get it right. They got so mad at him that a bunch of them just killed the guy. Right? And so other believers heard about it and so they said, hey, we gotta get you out of here. So we're going to hide you in our basket, we're going to lower you down, and basically dig out. I, I love the story. Right? Because Paul is saying this to them. When I just became a believer, I started suffering for the Lord. And when I put this together, I remember that, you know, I started to think, how many of us get that concept that we're suffering for the Lord. We don't think like that. We think like, oh, I'm blessed for the Lord. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. But it's hard to serve the Lord. People make fun of you. You gotta, if people are not making fun of you, bad things happen. You gotta see where God is in the midst of the bad things and focus on what God is doing and not what Satan is doing. Because if we're not, we start getting misled and now we start doubting what God is doing, doubting that God loves us, doubting that God even want to work with us, and we start digging more into this direction. And before you know it, our relationship with God is falling apart. So I, I think it's really crazy. Right? I, I love this too because you know I you know I, I think about this and you know for me another lesson that I get from this is there's sometimes we have to just run. Every time we think we're supposed to fight something, that's not always true. That fight is for another day. That's not the battle for the day. How many of us are trying to fight all the battles today when we have a battle that we got to deal with? But we're trying to fight everything and we're getting all confused, we're getting all lost, we're getting, we're getting frustrated, we're getting weak, we're getting tired. We want to give up. And then we start putting the woe with me. I, I, I believe Paul, you know, when he was giving this stuff, is, come on, gang. We, we, we are big deals. Once you receive Jesus Christ, you became a knockout kid for the kingdom of God. Satan cannot stand you. And he will do everything he can do to get you to doubt why you qualify to be a knockout kid for Christ. How many times do we pray? And it was, Lord, if my life was only like this, or if this never happened, that never happened. Instead of looking back and saying, Lord, and you got me out of that. I love Paul's list because he goes, man, I was stuck for a day, day and a half at sea. But God saw me too. Not like where was God day and a half, you know, his attitude was so different. And I, I want us to hear the same message because you know again, the world just gonna get harder. Yeah, I I, I don't tell my age right now. You know, I, I, I remember watching Leave It to Beaver. That was like wow. I watch it now like what? What the heck going on with me? I feel, right? You know, um, and we just see the world deteriorating more and more. 
and the world will get harder and harder. It's the way it's it's gonna it's gonna unfold. But we can be we must train ourselves not to be fooled by everything we hear or everything that claims to be God. Always measure our work with, with what's happening, you know? God, God, you said something? How many of you guys hear God speak to you guys? I mean, not, not audio, okay. Well, you hear audio, God bless you. I don't get audio, I'm kind of jealous right now. Uh, not full audio. Oh, okay, okay. But it was not full audio. Yeah. I don't even get it. Yeah, hey, okay, okay. Well, even that, you know what I feel, God? I take that and I start matching it up. Because sometimes my emotions can mislead me. You see, because I get to some really rough stuff. It's, it's me. And so a lot of times, the way I analyze things and then I process things is based on what my life, I went through in my life. And so when I think I hear God, I measure it up. And if I can confirm it in the Word, I'll tell you it's about me. I just know it. Why? Because it matches up with the Word of God. You know, suppose not something like this. Oh, you know what? Uh, I think the Lord wants you to... I feel like the Lord telling me that no prayer for that because, you know, she's been on that today, so just... The Lord wants you to suffer so she understands not to have an attitude. <laughs> I'm not shut up in the Lord of God. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to read it, but I can guarantee you there's nothing in here that says, you know what? Yeah, she should suffer. I read stuff like pray for you and pray for those guys that irritate you. You love them, but you love yourself. What? And I love me. I don't know about that right now, but I love me. You know? No, love that the same way. Yeah. That's how I measure. Right? And that's how we got to measure everything. Don't be fooled by everything we hear. Yeah? We are one privileged uh, generation to have this. Yeah. And not portions of it. All of it. Why not make use of it while we can? Yeah? I'll call the worship team up. We're going to be ready to take communion. Uh, I want to close with this couple of things that I, I want to uh, still hear. Uh, you know, too often we make the mistake, uh, or we mistake powerful blessing, when in reality, if you read scripture, you'll find that uh, suffering is more than wrong for a believer. It's really just the way it is. And I don't want us to get caught up with the awkward uh, uh, circumstances uh, because that does not dictate if we fall in the will of God or not. Yeah? Remember, the inward transformation is the big deal. That is what God is like. Not the nice pretty house around you. I love the pretty house on the inside. Just pray. Lord God, Father, we come before you and we thank you so much for loving us.